Hello and welcome back to the vlog. Hello. Today we're at Trimble Dimensions. I hate everything about that. What are you doing? Look, Mom, barely any hands. We're, we're being really dumb right now, so. Okay. Do you think the bucket's gonna fall off if I keep spinning like this? Okay. So, why, why are we out in the middle of the desert freezing our ass off? Great question, Eric. <laughs> so why we're here is Trimble Dimensions, Trimble, a leading industry technology provider, puts on this event every two years. The last time, though, was 2018, thanks to COVID, but typically every two years to show off their latest and greatest in machine control technology, geospatial technology, all of that jazz. So they have the convention and their classes and their speakers at the Venetian on the Strip, but out here is where they're able to demonstrate the technology in real world scenarios. So like right behind you is a cul-de-sac that you can actually get in and grade with not just a cat grader, but a deer grader oh, to cool. show you oh, wow. how the technology actually plays out in the field. So this is really cool. I think it's cooler than uh, typical trade shows in a lot of ways or just shows in general because you can get in the machines and actually use the machines in legitimate scenarios. So this is Ryan Neal, Caterpillar Excavator Ready? Extraordinaire. I never did this before. And he's going to teach Eric Jumper here how to run this machine. Hi Ryan, welcome to the show. Hi Eric Jumper, how are you? <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Us and tell us what you do at Cat. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Ryan Neal. I'm the product application specialist for large excavators uh, for North America. And we're here in uh, Las Vegas at Trimble Dimensions. And we're going to show Eric some of our new technology we have on our excavators. We've got a single GNSS. Um, and great, great introduction or a great intro to GPS without going full uh, dual, which I'm going to show you what we do. And our new automatics, we've improved our automatics. They're much quicker, more accurate. And that, that's what we've been showing today. So, this is a 2D machine, basically? This is 3D. We're using 3D today. So it's 3D with one? One GPS mask, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're taking the four cameras. So there's one, you saw, left, right, rear, and then there's one right here. Yeah. Right up there. And so now we have full 306 degrees around the tractor. We have quick mode and then improved quick mode. Which I'm going to take you down to normal mode to start out with. Sure. Two arrows means normal mode. That is flashing, green, meaning the automatics are activated, they're just not functioning at the moment. So the minute that I hold this button down right here, now your assist is on. Your autos are on all the time. You let off, so you hold it down to keep them on, and then you're only using automatics when you need it. Because in, in an excavator, I'd say maybe 10% of the time you're really going to use the automatics. It's just when yeah. you're finishing. Yeah, just for that last yes. and so, drag. So just hold it down, and then you let go, and you have autos ah. whenever. So here we have... Eric Jumper, doing nothing productive with an excavator. That's all I wanted to say. Oh. So I'm going to demonstrate doing a pass automated, putting something on grade. So as you can see, the, the, the pad we have here is all, all kind of messed up. So right now, my bucket is right on grade. It's zeroed out, so I'm gonna engage the autos. And now I'm dragging backwards in automatic. And it's perfectly on grade. So if I was trying to do a big area at one time, or if I was trying to get a whole slope done or you know cover a big amount of ground, that would take me much longer and it would be way less on grade when when trying to do a, a, a big grading job like that. So just to just to kind of show that, just to kind of show how this thing works, I'm gonna do this whole pull with just one hand. So, finger on the trigger, autos are engaged, pulling back. Easy peasy. That's all it takes. Making sure that the water level's on grade. <laughs> Lake Trimble's really clear this time of year. Oh my goodness. Where's it gonna go? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So this 
Can I get can I get in here? Oh wait, let me get in. Okay, so here we are at Lake Trimble. Please follow. And this is the new Trimble wildlife uh -huh. exhibit right here. Stop. That is terrifying. Please, please stop. That is so scary. I hope it bites you. My hat is in Lake Trimble. No, it's not yeah. going. No, yeah, go away. come yeah. on. <laughs> That's my favorite hat. That's my Boston Marathon hat. It's gonna sink. Oh, it's sinking. I know, sinking. it's sinking. <laughs> it's sinking. Oh my God. <laughs> I wish that was a it's case like hat. watching the Titanic. <laughs> Exactly what it's we need kind of is right there. That's, that's all we need, but it's in the wrong. Oh, Do you man. think it would be too much to ask? Yes, yes <laughs> to relocate their whole sonar system. Much better. And now for rough grading, but with bulldozers. It's a ghost dozer. It's a ghost dozer. There's your title. Ooh, spooky. No, not the back blade. No. <laughs> All right. So Sam Meeker is going to take us through this beautiful Lieber 716 dozer. This is the nicest dozer <laughs> within. <laughs> or, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Sam Meeker is going to take us through this beautiful John Deere 850L dozer. That is the nicest dozer that's not within 10 feet of us and not the Caterpillar. <laughs> oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Sam Meeker is going to take us through this Caterpillar D5 dozer that you can't see because there's a Lieber in the way. <laughs> Bus driver, move that lever. <laughs> <Bus driver. Move laughs> so, <laughs> so come on. <laughs> so Sam, thanks going on here. So what we're uh, what we're showing off here is our new feature called steer assist. Okay. So steer assist does exactly what it says it does. It helps to steer the dozer when you're when you're loading it up. Uh, say you're corner loading a machine and it wants to drift off to the side. Steer assist is going to help you go straight. <laughs> So there's kind of two different versions of it. Uh, the, the basic version we include in our ARO with assist, and uh, it just uses the IMU, the inertial measurement unit on the blade, to steer the tractor. So it, it knows when you're going straight, it knows when the tractor's drifting, and oh. it's gonna compensate with the tracks to keep you going straight. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So the joke used to be all you have to do is steer. Now, now you don't. Now you That's just good. make it go forward. Yeah. Then the cooler version is called Steer Assist 3D. All right, there is a charge for that. We, we charge for the software for that. Okay. But what that does is that lets you snap onto a line on the design. You can yeah. follow a road. And it follows the road. Yeah, Whoa. it follows the line, follows the road exactly. So that's so, where the trimble comes into play. That's where the trimble comes in. You have to have the 3D components on the tractor. Yeah. All right? But and again, it's yeah. just it's integrated. Yep, right. all integrated. It's in. all integrated. Whoa. Yep. And uh, and it'll it'll follow a curb line. It'll follow a straight line. Say if you're you know you're you're working the uh, the toe of the slope, you're doing retaining ponds or something. Working the toe of the slope, snap that right onto that line down there, and it'll follow it right around. Right. You you can almost come at a 90 degree angle to it, and it'll snap on it, steer the tractor around. Wow. Right. So I have I have used this when we were testing it. I've taken it around a 90 degree corner. And it'll keep that blade tip on that 90 degree corner and steer the tractor all the way around it. Wow. Because of course we can pretty much counter rotate. Yeah. Now you also did notice too that we've got our horizontal guidance, uh, the light bar up here as well too. So that's going to help you to, you know, see how far you need to go uh, before you uh, you get in and snap on there. Okay, so I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea about anything you just said. So okay. Eric, can you demonstrate? <laughs> it's going to be a lot more productive if you do it than I yep. do it. It's just going to be some idiot running a dozer. No, I know. Know. Get out of the way. Now the feature that we just talked about is, uh, I think they call it steer, to, steer assist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this machine up. Uh, I'm going to give it an exaggerated angle. So I'm not going to line up with that line at all. I'm going to have like a 45 degree pitch on it. Uh, I'm going to put the machine in gear. I'm going to hit autos. It's going to engage everything. It's going to engage my blade control and steer assist. And basically, I guess that 
I guess how Sam said it is, I'm just gonna be able to let go of the machine. I'm gonna be able to sit here with my hands, uh, and it's gonna do the whole thing. It's gonna lock onto the line, um, and it'll leave a nice clean pass. So, I haven't tried it yet. Let's see if it works. All right, so I'm like a 45 degree angle from that line right now. And as soon as I put it in auto, uh, it's gonna have to account for the fact that I'm running into the line at a weird angle. So the machine is more than likely gonna steer it that way. Um, so let's give it a shot. No hands. No hands. I didn't do a single thing, but put it in gear. I don't know what to do with my hands. Okay, okay, so I just realized something that the dozer's doing. It's still in auto steer. Okay, so usually out of habit for me, when I pick up the blade, I click the button and take it out of auto. But because I wasn't paying attention, I didn't take it out of auto. Um, and what happened was, as I'm steering backwards, I just tried to, Chase was, Chase was kind of standing in the way, um, and I didn't want to nip him with the blade. So out of habit, I steered the machine to get around him and it's steered it right back to the line. So I'm gonna flip it into auto again. So now it's in auto steer. And the more I fight it, the more it brings it back to the line. I just, I just want to go look at the skid steers. He won't get out of the bulldozer. Oh my God. How, how, how did that buildwood sticker get there? Eric, look, how did that get there? I can't read. What's it say? All right. Skiddies. Let's go look at skid steers. That was so weird. So this is a caterpillar skid steer. I promise we're not trying to focus on caterpillar. Just to, to prove the point, there's a John Deere, there's a Kubota, there's a Case, there's a Lee Bear, there's a Bobcat. This is not a cat commercial. Here's an Eric. Here's an Eric jumper. But this is a 259 skid steer. And the reason why we're gonna focus on this uh, compact track loader, Compact track loader. It's not a skid steer. It's not a skid steer. It does skid the steer though. Is it has a G GPS setup and it has total station. What's a total station? A total station is basically you'll set up a total station somewhere, a robot, on a known position and it'll shine. It's right there. Yeah, it's There's cool. a prism here, it picks up the prism and because of that communicating back and forth, essentially, it knows where this is. And so why this is a great setup is, say we were in a warehouse, you can't get a GPS signal within a warehouse, but you still need to grade it for a concrete floor. So that's when you're gonna hit the total station yep. and get you that accuracy that you need if you're doing something like a runway or you can grade indoors. Very also, accurately. in the city, this is going to be a lot more popular because they can work uh, near buildings where you're not going to have signal. Near buildings, trees, that kind of thing. I haven't been in one of these in a while. Holy shit, footprint? he owns one. Oh. You own one. I know. So see, I am, as I lower the blade. Wow, that's kind of nice. Right it used there. used to be the same size as... Uh, as I lift the blade up. Yeah, now I need to go down. There we go. Now we're on grade. So all I'm going to do is start the track forward, and it should keep it dead nuts on grade. So, you can kind of tell he wasn't in auto until about right there. I still don't think he's in automatic. No, uh, he thinks he is. He's not. Oh, I guess he is, because it's adjusting. It's leaving a shit pass, though. Yeah. What is he doing? Oh, 
Lift the blade up. Lift the blade up. Oh my god. And he's spinning the machine in a circle. I'm gonna cry. He's parking. <laughs> Fire! I'm pretty sure the waves are in the design. Fired. That's part of the design. This is a putt-putt course. Uh, so we want the waves in there. Fired. I'm really good at running skid steers. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll hit it with one more pass, and we'll be dead nuts on grade. Oh, f OK. There's no way that's on grade. Yeah, I don't He's moving so much stone right now. What are you doing? See, the other Flat. thing is he's got the blade tilted forward. So that's the problem with the skid steer versus the dozer. A dozer, when you put the blade down, it goes to the same angle every time. The problem with these box blades is you kind of have to mess with them a little bit um, to get them to set down properly. I hate it. I hate box blades. You're yeah. going gonna to be the reason that we have to start going through a class to run the machines out here. I don't know if this was dead nuts on grade, but like. That is dead nuts. Yeah. Right. And now, for rough grading, but with excavators and tilt rotators. OK, so what's going on here is we have a Caterpillar 315. Is this, what is this, 315? Cat Caterpillar 315 with an Encon and Mr. Encon himself, Ryan Goodfellow. I'm not Mr. Incon, but yeah, I, I have a few Incons. Ryan actually started Incon. I started Incon? Yeah. No, I didn't start Incon. Oh, never mind. False, fake information. False, fake news. That's it. Yeah, 100% fake news. OK, so um, the cool thing about this is tilt rotator, new machine, and it has set up, it's set up with 3D, so you can see on the tilt rotator all of the different movements, and you can grade all different kinds of slopes and do some pretty amazing things with this machine with the technology on here. So Eric, what are we doing here? Making a mess. Making okay. a big right. old honking mess. All right, Eric is in the 315. We just cut so many people in line. We cut all of these people in line. <laughs> cool thing about tilt rotator is how close I can get to the machine and work efficiently. Um, one of the big selling points is not having to move the machine around as much. Um, so you can sort of work this whole area without ever having to um, get out of the way without having to move the machine. I definitely almost hit Aaron and that would be bad. <laughs> While Eric is running a cat excavator, there's also a link belt a case, a Hitachi, and more cat. The cool thing about this event is it's focused on Trimble and the technology, but they have they have everything here. There's a there's a Volvo right there. There's one of just about every machine out here featuring the latest in technology. So contractors very rarely have just one machine kind of machine for their fleet. They typically run a mixed fleet. But having similar technology across that fleet is a big advantage and allows everything to run a lot more smoothly, allows you to connect, collect data more effectively. So this is just to illustrate, I could be a contractor with a mixed fleet running all of these machines featuring the exact same Trimble technology. And now for paving. So what we have here is a working milling machine. They have millings here, so it's not actually asphalt, but it's similar principle. Running off of a total station, so I believe it's pulling, what, from that total station? Or maybe one of those? There's like 10 of them set up here, Whoa, so I don't know There's which... an army of them over there. Yeah, there's an, <laughs> there's a, there's an army of total stations, <laughs> but this is a good example of like say this is a runway for example and you want really tight tolerances on a runway you'll be running that total station because you're going to be getting within what is it millimeters millimeters, millimeters. So really 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 precise uh, types of tolerances off this setup yeah so very practical applications on airport runways interstate highways 
Uh, really, there's no reason, there's no limitation to where you can use it. Yeah. But when you need those tight tolerances, we do get that out of the total station. So our spec is one millimeter vertically. One millimeter. So we can we can achieve that through a specific measure up process of the machine and calibration of the system. Wow. So, yes, we can we can get to that to that accuracy. That's amazing. That's a nice surface. And then they'll come back here and they'll use the paver running off of the total stations as well to give it, like he said, that one millimeter of accuracy across that next lift of asphalt. Hello and welcome to the Build It booth here at Trimble Dimensions Plus in Las Put your Vegas. Stickers out. Put your stickers out. In Las Vegas, Nevada, come by. We're here all day until noon. We would love to see you. Say hi. We even have stickers. Do you want some stickers? You want stickers? Make people feel good. There you go. Thanks, mate. I'm Matt. Great to meet you, Matt. Nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping by the Build It booth. Oh my God. How did the sticker get on there? How did. How did that happen? Wow. I'm only affiliated with this company until we get in trouble. Then I have nothing to do with it. So that wraps us up with Trimble Dimensions. Thank you, Trimble, for having us out. Thanks to all of the subject matter experts we talked to today. Eric, did you learn anything? I learned that dozers um, are called bulldozers because they're bulls and bulls push dirt. Hey, you. And I learned that spiders don't move very fast. Oh. You didn't even get that on camera, did you? I learned that hats float. Hats do float. So, hopefully you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something. We'll see you on the next one. Stay dirty. Stay clean. Dirty.